Hi, I'm Ed Nolan and I'm a psychology teacher at Queen Elizabeth Sixth Form College and our film today is going to be looking at selecting an appropriate statistical test, inferential statistical test for psychological research. This is, film is made for students studying the EDUCAS specification um, for A-level psychology but can be used for other specifications also. Now first of all we're going to look at five steps that you need to take when using a statistical test um, in order to identify whether you can accept or reject your research or your hypotheses. Now, these steps are all going to be assessed by the exam board, um, so you need to become familiar with them, and we will look at some today, and some will be looked at at another lesson. So our first step is that we actually have an appropriate significance level. Um, now, we've looked at that in our previous video, but as we can see there, there's some examples. The generally kind of accepted minimum level of significance we use is 0 0.05, um, which means the probability that there is a difference or relationship occurring by chance is 5% or less. Then it's about choosing a correct inferential test. Then we need to be able to use a test to calculate something called an observed value. Now, for the EDUCAS specification, you will not need to do any um, inferential calculations in the exam. Then you use this observed value and compare it to a critical value from a table um, to see if it is significant. Once you've done that, you can then accept your research hypotheses or reject it, and the same with your null. So you'll need to know all five of these um, steps or stages um, for the exam, and we should get you through them quite easily. Remember that statistics are a little bit mean and can be deviant, but uh, you, can, you can do this. Now, in this lesson, um, or this video, we're going to look at inferential statistical tests and which one to choose. OK, so you're a research psychologist like this fine young fella here, and he's got some thinking to do. Because if we look at test studies and tests, they do different things. First of all, in the last film, we looked at this um, idea of studying whether the textbook or whether YouTube would be the best thing to prepare you for a psychological test. Now, of course, that is looking at a difference. We're looking at differences in scores between two different conditions. However, sometimes we look at correlations, we look at relationships, we're looking at not how far apart the data is, but how does it run together. And so tests need to be different for those. Some need to measure a difference, some need to measure a correlation. Also, if we think about it, statistical tests measure the likelihood that our data occurs by chance. Could there be a chance difference? So we have a look at our experimental design. So on the top here, we're using a repeated measures design. We're using the same people in both conditions. Well, if that's the case and you find a difference, it's less likely to happen by chance because you're using the same people. It's what's called related data. And the same actually applies to them um, match pairs um, experimental design. However, if we look at what's below, we can see that we're using two separate groups of participants. We're using independent groups design. So because there are two different groups of people, we're much more likely to get a difference. So the difference, uh, by chance, is more likely to happen. So we need different tests um, to look at that. The third area, probably, um, we need to look at is the data itself. Um, I know you all love um, levels of measurement, but that's quite important. Because if we're looking at categories, whether you pass or whether you fail, that's very different to a 10-point rating scale. Because there's much more variance in the 10-point um, rating scale, you're more likely to get, by chance, a difference. Likewise, if we're looking at temperature at the bottom of interval data, where we can see there it's 36.5, there is much more likely to be more variance in that data, therefore more chance that you will get a difference. So some of our statistical tests need to be much more sensitive than others to pick up these different levels of data. So what do we do when we go to um, select a statistical test? When we've done our study and we're like, right, I've got my data here, 
how I've got to know if it's significant or not, I want to know if I can accept my hypotheses, you've got to ask yourself three questions. Question number one, am I looking at a test of difference or relationship? Now, tests of relationships are correlational studies. The second one is, if I'm looking at a test of difference, what's my experimental design? Is it an independent group's design, which is non-related data? Or is it a repeated measures design, which is related data, and match pairs, which is also repeated, uh, sorry, not repeated, it's related data. And then we've got to say, OK, what level of data am I using? Now, remember, you're French for this, at least that's what I tell my students, it's a black subject, it's noir. Yeah, so nominal data, ordinal data, interval data, or ratio data. We'll have to look and see if it's one of those. Well, we can actually shortcut that and you'll find out in a minute. So I'm calling it the three Ds, not the, not the three DSs, um, but the three Ds. Yeah. So when we're going to choose a test, this is, these are the three questions you need to ask. Difference or relationships? If it's a difference, what experimental design and what level of data? The three Ds, difference, design and data. Okay, this guy here, he's looking a bit puzzled now. So he's got to choose a statistical test for his um, research. And this is what he's going to use. And this is why he's looking a little puzzled. And we'll explain it all to you. So this is a uh, mnemonic that you need to learn in order to identify which test and to take into exam with you. So it says students come to class when Miss says, no Rick. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. This fellow here is looking a bit puzzled because it relates to this table. This is a table that you need to spend some time on getting your head round and know. You might want to try drawing it out, um, hiding it, drawing it out again, and then checking to see if you've got it right. But the, the mnemonic, if I can say it right, will help you out with that. So as you can see here, we've got our three Ds. Is it a test of difference or relationship? That's our two areas. We've got our designs, repeated measures design and match pairs design, that's related data, or independent groups design, non-related data. And then down on the side, we have our levels of measurement or levels of data. So nominal, and then categorised together is ordinal, ratio and interval. And I said that maybe there's a kind of an easy way of doing this. You can just say at least Ordinal. So if you're not sure if it's ordinal, racial, or interval, for the statistical test, you can just say at least ordinal, and you should be able to get away with that. And then you have a whole host of tests there. A sign test, the chi-square test, the Wilcoxon sign test, the Man Whitney test, and the Spearman Row. These aren't the full names of the tests. They are shortened names, and that's fine. You'll still get credited for those in the exam. So... Let's go back over that again. That's what you need to know. And you've got to be able to use that in order to select tests from the exam. That's a way of remembering it. So if we go through this again, what does it mean? You might want to test yourself. So uh, students is a sign test. Come is this chi squared. Class, chi squared. And then when, so Will Coxon. Miss is a man Whitney you, and says is a Spearman row. And then no Rick is our nominal and at least ordinal data. And our Rick stands for repeated measures design or match pairs, you might want to call it related data. Or I is for independent groups design, and the C is correlation if we're looking for a relationship. And there we have it. We've got it all there. Have a look now. Let's see how much you can remember. It might be worth pausing this video now and see if you can fill that, that in. OK. So what happens in the exam? Let's look at the exam question. So here's an exam question. We have our study, which you should be familiar with these types of studies. Um, so here we have one about um, looking at children. It's a non-participant observation and what they're doing in the playground and what toys that they're playing with. So not the playground, but what toys they're playing at in a local nursery. OK, so the questions are at the bottom. Number one, or A, identify an appropriate statistical test for the above study, which is one mark. 
and then question B just by the selection and it's out of three marks there. Okay, so to answer the first question you need your three D's. Do you remember what they are again? Difference, design, data. So if we can see here we can identify that they are the type of toys that they're playing with uh, between boys and girls. Now it doesn't specifically say it is a difference, but you will by reading it understand by looking at the um, chart as well that they are actually looking at the difference between boys and girls. Yeah, decipher that. So we see boys and girls, that's got to be an independent group's design. Unfortunately, it can't be a repeated measures design, not without um, a lot of time and some medical intervention. So it is an independent group's design. They haven't matched them on anything, so we know it's an independent group's design. And then they're looking at what they're, whether they play with action or non-action toys. That's categories. Those are categories. There's no level of how much action or non-action they are. They're just action or non-action. So that... Um, is a categories of data. So if we go and look at our chart again, we can say, right, we know we're looking at the difference between boys and girls. So it's a test of difference. Because it's looking at boys and girls, and they've not been matched in any way, we know it's an independent group's design. Now, because it's categories of data, because it was the types of action or non-action toys, that's nominal data. So what's our statistical test? A statistical test is a chi squared. So there we have um, question A answer chi squared one mark. That's a lot of work for one mark. But luckily, question B um, is where we actually get the marks for. Now, to get full marks for that question, it's out of three. And remember, we have three justifications. Now, this is how marking works. To get the full three marks, you need to pick each of those three elements out and you need to have linked them. Now, if it is a um, correlational study, you won't have to pick one out, which is the design, of course, because there is no design, but there's still the same format I, uh, applies. You identify the justification and you clearly link it to the study. And remember linking it, you need to refer to girls and boys and play and local nursery schools. You need to put it into the context of the study. If you don't put them in the context of the study and you identify all three, you'll get two marks. You'll just get the two marks. But if you uh, identify two and link them, you also get two marks. So for three marks, it's three and linked. If you just identify two and don't link, it's one mark. Or if you've got one and it's linked, it's one mark. So you can see that you will drop easy marks if you don't link. And it's just by simply putting it into the context. It's about simply slowing down a little, looking at your answers and making sure it's put in there. Okay? So, let's have a look. Here's one I did earlier. Um, so... There's my answer. So justify the selection statistical test for three marks. See if you can spot the three Ds in there. A chi-squared test would be chosen because the study compared the difference in the toy selection of girls and boys, which also makes it an independent group's design as there are two separate groups of children in each condition according to their sex. And they measured the type of toys played, sorry, and as they measured the type of toys played, um, with the level of data is nominal. Can you spot these? Difference, design and data. All in there. Yeah? Three Ds, all included, four marks. Okay. So what have you learned from this video? What have we learned today? Number one, there are five steps and the exam board are going to assess you on all of those um, five steps. I don't know if you can remember what they are. Uh, appropriate level of uh, significance, identifying that, identifying the correct statistical test, calculating an observed value, comparing it to a critical value, and then relate it to your role and your um, research hypotheses. 
There are different statistical tests, which we've learned that today, and that you use the three Ds when choosing the statistical tests. Yeah, remember what they are? I think I've said it a few times. Yeah, have we got that? Difference, design, and data. And so in order to help you um, remember the, the table with all the statistical tests on, you can use the mnemonic um, students come to college when Miss says, no Rick. See if you can remember what those relate to. Now to gain full marks in an exam um, question, particularly when you've got to justify a statistical test, remember that you relate to the three Ds and you link it to the study and put it into the context of the study. Okay, so you've done it. You're doing a fantastic job. Just stay calm, have a go at the activities, and um, I'm sure you will do well.